Hello ladies, my name is Casey Smith and I am just super excited to share with you all this morning. So good morning, I'm going to give a few minutes for some people to hop on um, if anyone's awake at this time. We all know that our seminar year end was last night and so a lot of us were up until like 3 a.m. Um, waiting to see those final numbers and so I know that most people will probably have to watch this later and that's okay. Um, I hope that um, those of you that are awake will hop on. So I will give a few minutes to see if anyone can see me. I don't know if I have to get approved by the admin for it to officially go live. So I'm just going to wait a few seconds. And um, I know that it will get published eventually. So I'll go ahead and get started if no one hops on in just a minute. Um, first of all, um, just good morning. Happy Sina New Year. Happy Sina Year. Is that what I should be saying? Uh, first of all, let me apologize for my location. I know this is not like the best angle possible for me to um, be coming to you guys live. And I know I'm like looking up, but I have my phone upside down, propped up on my new Louis Vuitton on the floor in a hotel. Okay. <laughs> so um, this is what I'm working with. So this is what you get. If I was at home, I would have had my Glamcore Ricky Skinny Mirror. If y'all have not seen those, you need one. It's amazing. It holds your phone, and it has that amazing makeup light around it, and it illuminates your face, so you look like a Snapchat filter. So <laughs> if you guys don't have that, you should totally look into it. It's definitely a business investment because I do my makeup in it every day when I'm at home. I just have it in my office, on my desk, and we're good to go. Okay, so I don't see anyone jumping on or any hearts or likes or any comments. So I'm going to assume that I need to be approved. But I'm going to go ahead and just kind of start introducing myself. I don't know. I'm hoping maybe it'll be just a second. Let me try to add to one maybe. Let me see. Let me see if one of my girls... There's one that I know is awake. Okay. I just tried to add some girls that I know are awake because I've seen one tag me. I don't see anything yet. Hopefully I will be able to see comments and all that good stuff. I think I have to be approved by the admin. Okay, well... I guess I'll just go ahead and get started. I don't want the, f the first part of this to be super long um, for those of you that have to watch later. So I'll go ahead and get started. My name is Casey Smith and um, I live in Rockwell, Texas. I am married to an amazing man and yay, I see a viewer. I must have got approved. Okay, good. Okay. So I don't know if I'll be able to see comments, so if I do not happen to see comments, I will just go on later and try to answer some questions that I can. Um, I won't necessarily be, yay, I see hearts and likes, good, okay. So um, I don't know, hey, okay, good, I see comments, yay, hi Angela, hi Esmeralda, super excited you guys are on this morning, good morning, happy new seminar year. Um, Hey, Jamie. Yay. I'm so glad. There's probably a delay. Y'all are probably like, hello, you're live. Okay, good. I'm so excited. There's some people awake this morning. All right. Okay, well, I guess I'll give it just a few more seconds as our audience continues to grow, so I don't have to do any repeating. I'm super excited you guys are on this morning. Thank you for your time. Um, if you have to get ready for work or whatever you're doing, please feel free to minimize me. I don't know if you've seen that feature. I must be late to Facebook land, but there is a way that you can actually turn on the video and minimize me um, where you don't necessarily have to watch me, but you can hear me because I do think what I have to say today is going to be important. I think that it's going to be a game changer, and I think that it is the best day to say it because we have a fresh start today, y'all. This is a brand new day. You know that feeling you get 
um, right before New Year's Eve where you set all of your new goals and all of your, you know, your new, new Year's resolutions. This is the day, y'all. This is the day we've been waiting for. So this is, everybody starts over at zero. We all are on the same playing field. We are all ready to rock and roll and um, just meet our new goals. So, okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started now. Um, I am going to try not to read the comments as I go so that I don't get distracted or I feel like I might not make any sense, okay? So, I don't know if I was approved before I said this, so I'm just going to go ahead and say that, first of all, excuse the way that I am doing this. I know this is not the best um, going live angle, and uh, I hope that my connection is strong enough. I cannot promise there won't be random strangers walking down the hallway because I'm sitting on the floor of a hotel. Um with my phone propped up in Kansas City, Missouri, okay? Um, I'm from Texas, so I'm not at home. Um, I'm at the International House of Prayer, and I've been here for about four days now, and so I just um, am working with what I got. This is where I'm at. So um, if I was at home, I would have my fancy little mirror and, like, you know, be all perfect uh, going live. But I'm not, so this is what we're working with. Okay, so first of all, my name is Casey Smith. I, you guys, I went ahead and wrote down what I wanted to say to you, and I'm so glad that I did because I don't normally do that. I normally am like, oh, I'll just go with the flow. Um, but after four days of being at this conference and seminar year ending at 3 a.m. last night and waking up early to do this video, I am not sure I would have made any sense for you all today. So I'm super glad that I wrote it down because I have some really good stuff to share with you. So... First of all, my name is Casey Smith. I live in Rockwall, Texas. I'm married, and I have a two-year-old daughter named Breslin. Um, I also have a boutique in Rockwall at the Rustic Warehouse. It is a storefront with over 70 different vendors. So we have everything from women's and children's clothing to furniture and home decor. And I um, do the women's and children's clothing, and I get to put my lip scents in there. So I'm super excited about that. And I'll tell you the story of how all of that came about um, in just a minute. So before we get started, I want to share a little bit about myself with you. Um, and I want to pre-warn you that because I have been in the environment that I've been in for the last four to five days, that um, my heart is extremely raw and vulnerable, and um, I am completely, like my, I've been completely immersed in the Holy Spirit the entire time I've been here, so I'm not going to apologize, but I am going to let you guys know that what I have to say will pertain to God, but it will also pertain to your business, so I really hope and pray that you guys will um, listen along, even if you don't consider yourself religious. Um, but I think that what I have to say goes hand in hand in both business and life, okay? So um, let's go ahead and jump into my sentence story. Um, let's see. So I said that I have a two and a half year old. And so about a year and a half ago, I was a stay at home mom. Um, and my husband was the sole income supporter of our family, okay? So I graduated college two and a half years ago, five months pregnant. Um, and so I decided no one was going to hire me five months pregnant. And so I stayed home with my daughter for a year. And my husband um, at the time was our sole income provider, okay? So he had all the responsibility on his head. And um, it was it was a God thing, and it was... It was a decision that I really wanted, and he honored in letting me be able to stay home. But it was hard. Y'all know. You stay-at-home moms know. You families with only one single income know. Um, it was it was a struggle. It was not easy um, on our marriage, on our, um, you know, on our relationship, on just life. I mean, it just was not easy. We were living paycheck to paycheck, hoping we could pay the bills. Um, but I knew that I wanted to be home with my baby and that I wanted to be the one raising my daughter. Um, and so that's what we did. But after a year of me being home, because I had graduated with a degree and I had the ambition to, to be more than just a mom, um, I decided it was time for me to go back to work. And I decided that it was time for me to do something um, worth my while. And so I had already had on my heart the desire to own a boutique. Um, and my husband, he was a current business owner. He was working two different jobs. He had a full-time corporate job, and then he also was um, a business owner. So he had two locations for a cell phone repair company. And he said, if you want to do the boutique, we'll figure it out. And 
I was in the process of looking for a place and I was actually talking to someone um, already about the room that she was going to give me when I received a call from one of my friends from college. This girl that called me from college was not one of my closest friends. It was just a random acquaintance. Um, and she was trying to get a hold of me and she finally got a hold of me. And when she, when she got on the phone, she told me a heart-wrenching, terrible, terrible story that she was going through. Her husband was stationed in the military and they had two small children and he had decided that he no longer wanted to be married to her. And so she was just like broken but in that brokenness she also was so faithful and so sure of herself that I had no other choice but to believe what she was saying to me so she called me and she told me what was going on in her life and that God had called her to open a store and that I was supposed to be one of her first vendors in the storefront well I had already been talking to someone so when I go to my husband as a stay-at-home mom um, and say you know God is going to provide us the place this is we're supposed to do it here I don't know where I don't know how I don't know when you know he had to trust in that and trust in me um, for that to be true and so we went into the rustic warehouse with Maddie and eventually I became the manager of the store and I was the, the manager for a year okay before my aunt Dan or my husband's aunt I should say introduced me to Synergence so I was selling women's and children's clothing and I was I was very blessed to do that I started um, my boutique with Maddie with no money okay so I was you know I was scraping the dollars to try and get a few clothes to put on the shelf so that I could make some more money um, my rent was going to be $225 because I was sharing a portion of a booth with someone and I didn't have $225 but what I did have is the ambition and the desire to do better and to be more and to and to give my family more and so I knew whatever it took I was going to make it work so fast forward a couple months later, I'm working as the manager, I have my storefront, my husband's aunt introduces me to Synergence, and you guys, I was not interested, okay? First of all, I had been with Mary Kay for four years, so I have direct sell background, um, and when I say I was with Mary Kay, I say I was in love with Mary Kay. I was like all wrapped up, as wrapped up as you could be. I at one point was a future sales director, um, I was going on every trip, I had a team, I was, I thought that that was my, that was my journey, okay? Um, I even named my daughter Breslin Kay, <laughs> and she was conceived at a Mary Kay convention. <laughs> so, I mean, I was not going anywhere, um, but my husband's aunt said, well, you cannot sell Mary Kay in a retail environment, and your livelihood right now is retail sales, and I said, you're right, and so I decided to take a second look at Lipsense and decided that I was going to put just the lipstick on my shelf, okay? I was not interested in building a team at all, and I told her, don't you even think about, you know, trying to teach me to do this business as a multi-level marketing company because I'm not interested. I'm just interested in putting this product on a shelf and making a profit. Um, and that's how most boutique owners will be until they catch the dream. <laughs> so don't give up on your boutique owners. Um, and so I decided to put the, the lip sense on my shelf and it, you know, it was, it was pretty much an instant um, difference in how great this product was selling to my group of people than how Mary Kay was selling for me. So I'm not speaking illy on the company of Mary Kay, the products, the people, any of that, but I'm saying for me, um, I was struggling to make a sale in Mary Kay. And when I like introduced Lipsense to my group of people, they went insane. They went crazy and they wanted it. So I knew that I had found a product that people were willing to pay for. And it wasn't an an inexpensive product and so that's you know that's what threw me off at first because I was like oh I don't know I don't pay $55 for lipstick but I knew that um, I had to give people an option right I had to give them a choice in the matter and now that I love it obviously I tell people every single day why it's worth that much but um, so I had not planned to build a business, but a month later, um, someone contacted me, my very first team member, Princess Shelby Romans. A lot of you guys know her. She's amazing. Um, she will definitely be a crown princess here within the next few months, um, and she's been with me since the very beginning. I mean, she's been with me since about a month in, and she came to me, and she said, um, 
I, she messaged me and she said, hey, this lipstick stuff, I want to do what you're doing. And I was like, oh, well, I'm not really doing it like that. I'm just going to sell lipstick. I'm not really building a team. And she said, you do not understand. I do not wear lipstick. And I'm also not super like spiritual, religious, but God has woke me, woken me up three nights in a row telling me to take a second look at this opportunity. And she said, so I need to be on your team. And I said, oh, well, okay. Well, I'm not really going to argue with God. So you're going to be on my team. And she quickly started building a team. And I took a second look at what she was doing. Cause I was like, wait a second, like what's going on? Like, why is she building a team? And you know, what's happening? And so it became a healthy competition, which between the two of us, um, where we were like each other's accountability. And we were like, Oh, she got five team members. Let me get five team members. She had another team member. Let me get another team member. But it was us working together. It wasn't, it was not competition in the sense that I felt like I needed to be better better than her. It was just competition in the sense of if she can do it, so can I. And so, like I said, I did not intend to build a team with Synodence. And here I am now waking up with just under 1,200 team members in 10 months, you guys, 10 months. I signed up in May. Um, I finished the seminar year with $2.8 million in retail sales. So just shy of Sapphire Crown Princess, but I'll be recognized as a Ruby Crown Princess for the seminar year that just ended. Um, of that 1,200 girls, I um, I have about 75, um, maybe 80 first line team members and 55 of those are qualified. So, um, my passion is now building my team. It used to be, I just wanted to sell some lipstick in my boutique, but now my passion is building my team and giving people the vehicle to free themselves, free themselves. You guys, cause I have found freedom in this company. You don't even understand. Um, so my passion is being able to give other women the opportunity that I have found. Okay. So, um, with my growing team, I have amazing, amazing women who have just taken off like crazy, insane rock stars. Um, and they're doing amazing things and they're changing their life as well. So my first commission check was about $385. And, um, I was super excited about that because my first commission or my highest commission check in Mary Kay for four years was around $600. And so I, like instantly saw four years, $600 and, um, one month, $385. Okay. Obviously there's a big difference. And so I knew that the secret to this was teaching other people how to be successful like I am. And so, um, as the months went on, they drastically increased. It went from like 385 to about 785 to about 1200 to about 2,500. Um, and in December is when I got the biggest commission check that I had received up until that point. It was about 40, $4,200. Um, and that's when I said, holy moly, I need to take a second look at this opportunity because I was working as a manager at Thoracic Warehouse and I was working day and night and I, I felt the calling on my heart. God was calling me home and I was confused and I was um, scared because I was like, what do you mean you want me to come home and sell lipstick? My husband had just recently sold his company that I told you guys about. Um, so that meant that we were going to rely solely on my boutique, my small little boutique and in a vendor mall, it's not a complete storefront by itself, um, and lipstick. Okay. But because we listened to God and we brought it home and he trusted me to do so, um, we have been like overly and abundantly and exceedingly beyond blessed. Okay. Um, in all aspects of my life. And so when that check came in December, um, the $4,200 check, I was leaving for pit stop, um, the next month. And I actually was able to book a couple extra days to take my family with me to Disneyland. And so I took my husband and my daughter and we stayed a couple extra days and we went to Disneyland on lipstick money and it was amazing. And that's when I told my husband, um, that it was time for me to quit the management position, uh, or I had told him right before, you know, um, and so we were betting for the next check to be even bigger. That's, I hit princess in, in I think January or December and decided that I had three months until the end of the seminar year to hit crown princess, because I knew that if I hit crown princess, I was going to be locking myself in to residual income for the rest of my life. Okay. As long as I worked my business. And so I gave myself three months to hit Crown Princess and I wrote it down on the calendar and I, I booked January as hard as I could. I booked every single day something that had to do with my business, whether it be launch demos for my new girls, whether it be vendor events, whether it be whatever it needed to be, I booked every single day. And you guys, February 10th, 
a month later, I hit Crown Princess, okay? So it took us nine months to hit a million dollars in sales, and then it took 37 days to do the next million, okay? 37 days. It was nine months, and then it took 30 seven days when I finally gave my all to God and listened to what he was telling me to do and started putting my heart in this business and working it like a business, okay? So um, over the last um, 30 days of March or 31, I should say, they did about 1.3 million in sales just in March. So it's pretty insane the rapid, rapid growth that we're having right now. I had 185 team members in January, y'all, 185. And I have just under 1,200 right now in March. Do you understand what this means? This is not my doing. I can't do this alone. This is God. This is God's anointing on me being willing and ready and obedient to what he's calling me to do. So this business is more to me than just lipstick. This is a ministry. And I truly believe that this company is anointed by God and that we are being given an opportunity to put ourselves on a platform and reach women around the world that we would have never come in contact with before. And we can show them the love of God through lipstick, y'all, through lipstick, okay? So um, what, let's see, I'm not really going on my uh, little list here, so let me make sure I'm on um, target. Let's see. Okay, so I didn't even tell y'all the amazingness. I got caught up on the $4,200 check, but I want to tell y'all that the next month my check came um, it was, I know we're not supposed to say exact numbers, so I'll just give you a roundabout. After the $4,200 check, I hit, you know, um, I hit Crown Princess in January. My February, my January check was around $12,000. And then in um, February, my check came and it was about $24,000. Yes, I said $24,000, uh, but that was my nine months in the company, okay? So my checks have continually grown each month by double, and the check that I'm about to receive for March is as well doubled, okay? This is like insane money, insane money, okay, y'all? I'm talking like change your life. So my husband and I are both staying at home right now, and I should say working at home. We are working at home right now, doing this business together. We have given it fully to God. If I go to every single training there is, I show up at every training. Um, I schedule, I you know go to every single corporate event I can go to. I make sure that I am doing everything that I can to make this my full-time income because I know that I'm setting, like, like I said, residual income up, but that comes with the work. That comes with always building your first line. I don't care if I'm going to get a $50,000 check. I'm going to make sure that I'm building my first line strong and wide because I know that you have to set the foundation for those things to continue, okay? And why I am sharing these numbers is because I want you guys to understand that God has blessed me with this money and what I'm doing here at the International House of Prayer is trying to figure out what it is he's calling me to do with those blessings. And so I'm not sitting here you know, piling up the money thinking I'm just going to live at the top and live on lipstick. I'm trying to figure out what it is that I'm supposed to do in this lipstick ministry with this money. Why am I being blessed with this kind of like crazy insane income that people cannot wrap their heads around? And what is it that I'm supposed to do with it? And I believe that as long as I keep my eye on him and I continue to pour into my people, that he will continue to bless me exceedingly, abundantly, and beyond. And I believe the same for you guys too. Okay, um, so I do have some points that are going to help you in your business. I promise I won't just sit here and like preach to you. <laughs> um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and get started on, um, let's see. Um, okay, so what I wrote down here is um, we are on a road to royalty in both literal and spiritual terms because the higher the rank, the higher opportunity for influence, okay? So I want you guys to understand that when we, you know, you've heard in like, Christian terms, road to royalty, right? That's the kingdom of heaven. But it's the same for Cynogens. We're on a road to royalty, okay? So you should know that the, the closer you get to the top with Cynogens, that is not a selfish goal. That is a goal because that's the higher you get, the higher your influence. And so if your heart's desire is to do this as a ministry, then you should have it on your goal to get higher and higher and higher. Because as you grow higher and higher, then you are going to continue to increase your opportunity to influence others, okay? Okay. Um, 
I'm going to teach you guys um, about some targets. So let's talk about targets. Words that express the meaning of a target in this context include aim, goal, objective, focus, end and intention, okay? Those are all words that describe targets, okay? So the goal synergen sets before us should be our targets, right? Um, ranks, personal sales volume, group cell volume, cars, and trips. You guys have to equip yourself with the knowledge, power, and ability to achieve these target goals, or when you aim, you will miss. Okay, so what I'm trying to tell you guys is you have to know what it is you're shooting for. This is the absolute perfect time to figure out what your target goal is for this year because it's a brand new year. So I want you to really go in the back office and figure out what it is that you can earn and what it is that you want to earn and set that as your target, whether it be a new rank, whether it be a personal sales volume that you want to reach, whether it be a group sale volume that you want to reach, which would be you and your team, whether you want to earn a car for your family, or whether you want to go on every single trip that they offer. Um, I am a little um, recognition based and so I will try to earn all of those things all the time. <laughs> Anything that you can earn, I'm going to try to earn it. Um, so you have to equip yourself with the knowledge to do that. When I was setting my target on Ultimate Royal, um, so, so not only have I been exceedingly abundantly and beyond um, blessed financially, but I have learned to set these target goals and I have reached every single one that I have diligently worked for, okay? So, um, Ruby Crown Princess, my goal was Crown Princess, and then, you know, Ruby Crown Princess fell into my lap because of the momentum of the work that I had already done, okay? Um, and then I knew that I wanted to earn a car, and so I Tier 1 qualified for a car in November and Tier 2 qualified for a car in, I think, February. Um, and so I've already earned a car allowance, $500 a month for a brand new car, and I'm going to get my husband a blue truck, um, but we have not picked it out yet. I don't know what kind of crazy person gets free money for a car and just doesn't go pick it out, but we wanted to make sure that our team um, continued to qualify before we took on something um, that we would be responsible for, and they obviously are rocking it. Um, and so um, I did, I car qualified. Um, I have been on multiple trips. I went to Pit Stop in California. I went to Crown Princess Retreat in Hollywood where the company paid for our stay. And we stayed on Hollywood Boulevard and we had like, a cocktail party at our scientist house, y'all, our scientist house with Joni Rogers. Um, um, I will be leaving for seminar, obviously, next week or this week. Y'all, I told y'all I'm not even in town right now, so who knows what day it is. Um, and then I also have Cabo qualified for me and my husband, so we'll be going to Cabo together this summer in June. Um, I'll be going to Costa Rica in January. Me and my husband both qualified for the trip to Costa Rica. Um, so, and then I'm already qualified for the cruise in February. So you guys, it's insane. Um, as long as you make these things your goals, then you can achieve them. But you have to set them on your radar um, because some people get lucky and they just fall into their lap. But if you put it on your radar, you know what you're aiming for. You know what you have to do. And you can check in with yourself and make sure that you're on target. So one of my goals was to be ultimate royal because it was something that could be achieved. And I was just like, well, if you can do it, then I want to do it. And so what that looks like is ultimate royal means that there are three inner circle courts, right? So your first inner circle court is your... Um, personal sales volume, okay, and you needed to do 40000 um, a year to be considered a personal sales volume court, okay, 40000 retail. Then your second inner circle court is your group sale volume, and you needed to do 200000 in group sale volume to be um, group sale volume court inner circle. And then your third inner circle is um, your qualified recruits. So you need at least 20 qualified first line recruits. And so when you do all three of those inner circle courts, you're considered an ultimate royal. So I had the group cell volume down and I had the qualified recruits down. But about two months ago, I looked at my personal sales volume and I only had about 20,000 in. And so I knew that I was going to have to do 20,000 with two months to the seminar year end, okay? And so when I told my husband that I needed to do another 20,000 to hit ultimate royal, he said, you're going to spend $10,000 on lipstick because it's a wholesale number, right? Of the $20,000, I needed to do about $10,000. And I said, no, I'm not going to spend $10,000 on lipstick. I'm going to sell $10,000 worth of lipstick. And he said, in two months, you're going to sell $10,000. And I said, I sure am. And so 
I looked at the numbers, I broke it up by the months that I had left, and then I broke it down by the weeks that I had left, and then I broke it down by the days that I had left. And then I looked at how many collections I needed to sell a day in order to make that goal happen. And so I knew every single day, if I didn't sell this one, then I needed to sell an extra one the next day, okay? And then I averaged all about saying, okay, well on a Saturday, I, I usually sell about this many, and on this day, I usually sell about this many. So I knew that if I averaged about, you know, one or two a day during the week, and about, you know, five or six a day on Saturdays, then I would hit my goal. And so if for some reason I was low on one of those days, then I would hop online on Facebook and I would be like, hey guys, look at this amazing stuff, check it out, da da da, and make sure that I made those sales, okay? So I did everything um, to make sure that I was on target for my goal, okay? So my goal was to hit Ultimate Royal and that's how I hit Ultimate Royal. It did not just fall in my lap. I didn't just magically sell $40,000 worth lipstick. Like, by chance. I made sure that that's what I was doing, okay? So I need you guys to understand that. Um, so if you are a Christian, you are a target of Satan, okay? And I told y'all guys I'm going to jump back and forth because I feel like I have something to say here that will go hand in hand with your business and with your relationship with God because I do feel that when the two of them are working together that your business is going to soar, okay? You will not be stoppable, okay? So if you are a Christian, you are a target of Satan, and there is a very real, highly structured force of darkness on this earth that wrestles against those that represent God. Satan has made it his goal to distract you from what you really are and your purpose in life, okay? So if you feel in your heart and soul that you are called to do this business, you should not let Satan get the best of you, okay? You need to equip yourself with the tools to fight those negative feelings and kick that crap to the curb, okay? Um, the good news is that he does not have, I'm going to do some puns here, y'all are going to laugh at me. The good news is that he does not have access to a back office like we do, okay? Satan does not have access to a back office like we do. Full of information, updates, and power to be successful, okay? He will never have enough bandwidth to overcome what God has already done. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? So now that I've talked about targets and the back office, which was intentional, let me talk about what the back office could be doing for you in your business, okay? So the business, the back office is your like blueprint for your business, okay? Just like the Bible should be your blueprint for your life, the back office is your blueprint for your business. You cannot do this business if you do not familiarize yourself with that back office, okay? It is so important. That is where everything is lined out for us. That is where all of the goals, all of the information, all of your team's information, all of the um, product knowledge, it's all there, okay? So you need to find the back office um, which is, if you guys are on here and you're like, I'm brand new, I don't even know what the heck the back office is. It's an online back office that Synagence has provided you. So whenever you go to log in with your distributor ID number, you're actually in the back office and you can click through so many different things. You can see our policy and procedures. You can see our trips. You can see our events coming up. You can see everything, okay? You can also see product knowledge. You can see your team. You can see all that good stuff. So familiarize with yourself with the back office. Um, if you do not study... The back office, just like if you do not use the Bible, it is detrimental to the success of your business or your life, okay? I truly, honestly feel that, okay? Um, so what we need to do is take the authority into our own hands in order to make sure that we can feed ourselves. And what I mean by that is you know the feeling you get when you're attending um, a leadership training that a crown princess is throwing. You know the feeling you get when you guys go out um, and do group events together, like do a vendor event with your um, downline. You know the feeling you get when you're at a company event, like like seminar or like um, conference or like uh, crown princess retreat or any type of com company corporate event. The feeling you get when you're around your Cine sisters and around all these women that are successful and powerful and motivating and inspiring, that feeling that you get, the Cine spirit is what I've heard it called before, that feeling that you get, um, that is what motivates you and inspires you and really just lights a fire in your heart to do better and be better, right? We're all about to experience that seminar because seminar is in a few days and we are all going to be just, you know, we're going to be 
insanely blown away by the Sinner Spirit at seminar. We're going to be like, oh my gosh, she's amazing. I want to do that. Oh my gosh, she's great. Oh my goodness. Like, this is amazing. I love my friends. I love my family. I love my group. You know, I love my girls. We're going to just all be in awe, right, of everything. Um, and so it's the same as the Holy Spirit for church. You go to these church camps. You come to conferences like this, International House of Prayer. We are in, immersed around people who are loving Jesus wholeheartedly. And so what happens is we get on fire, and then we leave these conferences, and we leave these company trainings, and we go, well, that was fun. I'm going to do everything in the world. And then days go by, and life happens. And eventually, we feel like we can't feel that spirit anymore. We feel, oh, well, I was excited at seminar, but, you know, I got kids to feed, and I got things to do, and I've got, you know, work to do, and blah, blah, blah. And we forget that feeling that we had in that moment. And so my goal is to make sure that you can feed yourself in those moments, okay? When we get home from seminar, I want that fire that was in your belly when you left to continue throughout the entire seminar year until you get recognized on that stage for your, girl, for your goals, okay? So what you need to do is be able to feed yourself, okay? And what I mean by that is um, you need to understand that um, you have to invest in yourself, invest in your business, Invest in your knowledge and invest in your team so that when you're lacking the motivation and desire, you remember how to reignite your fire all over again. And I'm talking about business and your relationship with God, okay? So your upline is a fabulous resource. Your upline, she wants nothing but the best for you. She is super excited that she shared this opportunity with you. Um, but she isn't meant to pour the kerosene on your fire daily, okay? You are meant to reignite your fire every single day, okay? She will help you, and she will be more than happy to help you. And there will be days when you can't reignite your fire, and your upline will, or your crown princess will, or your sin sister will, or your sin bestie will, okay? There will be days when those people reignite your fire, but you need to have access to reigniting that fire every single day. You cannot expect your upline to to want this more for you than you want it for yourself. It's the same with your relationship with God. You cannot expect your pastor to be the holder of your relationship with God. You cannot expect him to be the only one feeding your soul so that you are closer and closer and closer and deeper and deeper and deeper with God, okay? You have to be feeding that every single day or else you're going to get hungry and hungry and hungry and eventually you're going to be too weak to keep going, okay? So... All right, I hope someone is getting something out of this. Y'all are like, girl's just preaching over here. She thinks she's pastor. I don't. I just, I got a lot of stuff going on here, and I really think that it needs to be said. Um, okay, let's see. So some of us are about to go to seminar for the first time, and others are returning as veterans who paved for the, bit, the way for us, okay? And so when we get there, we're going to see experience and overwhelming sin of spirit, Friendships will be formed and strengthened. Goals will be celebrated and made. Some of us will feel exalted, and some of us will be disappointed, okay? We are not going to all be super proud of ourselves, right? Some of us are going to think, man, I wish I could have done that. I wish I should have done this. I wish I could have said that, you know? And, and that's okay because it's gonna, we're all going to be feeling some type of way, okay? But it's important to know that you are here for a reason, and we are going to immerse ourselves in the greatness, and with that comes an overwhelming sense of comparison, okay? So what I want to talk to you right now is comparison. And you guys, everything that I'm saying, like I keep saying, goes hand in hand with your um, business and with your relationship with God, okay? So I want you right now to commit not to body shopping, what is body shopping, y'all? Body shopping means do not be looking at homegirl and thinking, man, I wish my legs looked like hers. I wish my nose looked like hers. Her hair's so cute. I wish I looked like that. Don't body shop. Just be happy with who you are because we're about to be around tons and tons of beautiful, gorgeous, successful, insanely amazing women, okay? And I want you guys, and we do that every day in this business because we sell cosmetics. I mean, everyone in this company is just fabulous, right? We're like, oh my gosh, we get overwhelmed. We start to compare ourselves. We start to think, well, she's better than me. Well, she's a crown princess because she looks like this. Well, she can do that because she looks like that. Well, she gets all her team members because of what she has. You know, that is not true. Stop comparing yourself, okay? Um, so I want you to commit to not body shopping, not jealousy, not gossip, not hatred, and not idolatry, okay? Not self-doubt, and I mean this because it's going to be 
easy for the enemy to creep into your head and to start telling you that if only you were like her, you could have been on that stage. And if only you had what she had, you could have been successful. And that's not true. So I want you guys to stop. If you begin to say these stupid things to yourself, I want you to write them down, okay? Write these stupid things that you're hearing down, read them, and ask yourself if you would say that to the girl sitting next to you. Because if, you're, if you walk past the mirror and you're like, oh my gosh, I look disgusting, I'm disgusted, would you say that to the girl beside you? Because I don't think you would. And if you would, then you really need, I mean, you just need it like, you really need some Jesus. Um, so, I don't think that you would, okay? So if you're saying these self-hateful things to yourself, and they sound ridiculous on paper, you need to stop saying them, okay? Let me tell you why. If... I walked up to, so we all, you may, Louis Vuitton may not be your, like, cup of tea, right? But if I walked up to Louis Vuitton, who is a designer, purse, you know, successful designer purse creator, and I said, your purse is disgustingly ugly. Like, you need to just rethink about that. I hate it. Like, would I have any authority in saying that? No. And I would be, like, stomping on an amazing creator of something, right? That is super successful. And that is how God feels when you do this to yourself, okay? So when you look in the mirror and you say, you're disgusting, you can't do this. If you looked like her, if I was strong enough, if I was skinny enough, if I was this, then I would have been successful. God hears your design is disgusting. If your design was stronger, if your design was skinnier, then it could have been better. Okay, do you understand what you're saying? If you would not say it to someone else, stop saying it to yourself. Stop it right now. Stop the comparison. We are meant to build one another up, okay? So as we take on this new seminar year, I really challenge you, if you will just give yourself one ounce of confidence and then continue to pour that confidence into your team, you will see your team soar like no other, okay? All right, let's see. Um, it takes all types to be successful in this business. This would be a completely other um, training that I would do. I love everything that has to do with personality types and how different we all are and how um, how we. it takes every single one of us to be successful. So I could do a whole personality, DISC personality um, training, but I won't do that today. Um, but I want you to understand that you have a purpose and a position and a destiny to fulfill, okay? Um, let's see. I don't want to take up a million more hours, so I am going to go ahead and wrap this up with an analogy, okay? So there's a video called The Flight of the Monarchs. I didn't know anything about this until yesterday. Um, through a couple different prayer sessions, um, I ended up holding hands with these ladies, and they were praying for me, and I, someone had just said something, and then it was like, wait, did you just say that? Because I just thought that. And she said, well, I have a word for you. And she said, um, The Flight of the Monarchs. She said, I want you to go watch The Flight of the Monarchs. She said, there are, there are different types of monarchs, okay? A monarch butterfly is what I'm talking about. There's three different types of monarchs. She said, there is a basic monarch butterfly, and they fly from, you know, point A to point B, but they die along the way. They can't make the whole journey, and then they have to stop and get food, and then these second type of monarchs, they can make it there and back or whatever, but they, they die along the way, okay? But the super monarch, the super monarch is different, and the super monarch can travel the whole way. And it will still live, okay? It will it will allow traveling the whole way, okay? So what that means is what I believe is that the newcomers will be different just like the super generation of the monarchs, okay? So let me tell you all what this says. Uh, the super monarch butterfly landed and laid its egg on a milkweed plant. This was no accident. Milkweed is the only food a monarch caterpillar can consume, Okay? So the, the monarch butterfly landed on the milkweed plant because it's the only food that it can consume. Unlike other caterpillars that made a chrysalis before butterflies and then die within a few short weeks, this one is part of the yearly super generation. When she arrives at her destination, her wings will show wear and tear, beat faithfully, carrying her without stopping. Her journey continues through the seasons, and after many months and thousands of miles, she will last, at last be ready to mate. The two butterflies will dance in the air and then join together, and in a few days she will begin to lay her eggs, hundreds of them. Her offspring and their offspring will prepare to start their journeys on the flight to their new destination and beyond over several generations, but each of them will only live about six weeks. In the fall, though, another super generation will be born. 
So do you hear what I'm saying? What I'm asking here is that you all take your stance with me to be a super monarch, okay? Don't be a regular monarch butterfly. Someone that joins this company and just flies around for a little while, lays a couple eggs, and then they die, okay? <laughs> I want you to be a super monarch, the one that can endure it all. Your wings are going to be tattered, and they're going to be you know, torn, and we're gonna, it's gonna be a long journey, okay? But when you finally get to that journey, I want your eggs to be laid a super generation. I want you guys to continue to fly among the top, all right? This girl that spoke to me yesterday, she, see, she said, I see you as a super monarch, and I just see you flocking among all the other super monarchs, okay? And I believe that that is you guys. I believe that that is the Cinegen's world. I believe that we are a world of super monarchs generation and we are ready to just take whatever it is that's going to happen on this journey tattered wings and all and we're going to make it happen we're not going to just sign up for a multi-level marketing company and dip our toes in the water and then decide it wasn't for us we're going to make it work and we're going to do everything we can to make sure that that is true okay so will you be a super monarch with me these are my closing thoughts and then I will um, finish up for the morning. I do have to go to a session at like 9 a.m. I don't even know what time it is, so hopefully I'm not late. Um, but we are born at caterpillars in life, both business and spiritual, okay? So we're all born as caterpillars. When you sign up for Synergence, you ganged your wings in this company, okay? You became a butterfly. We have to make a choice. Will we be one of those who dies off quickly and give up? over the journey, as hard as it will be, because there will be different seasons. There will be different um, things that happen. Will you give up, or will you allow yourself to be the super generation who, outla who outlasts those among us with the endurance on our journey? The same goes for your life as a Christian. We're all caterpillars until we're born again in Christ. So will you emerge in Christ as just another monarch? Or will you claim your spot among the super generation? So you guys, I hope that this meant something to you. These are my closing words. I know that I didn't, I didn't talk so um, literally about t team building and sales. And I can teach you all of those things because I have a passion for those things. I have a YouTube channel if you guys want to learn from it. It's Casey Lofton Smith. It's my Facebook name on YouTube. Um, but I truly feel that this information is a game changer. And if you do what I said in this, in this video, then you will find your business just soar. You, it will soar. So I challenge you to be a super generation of the monarch butterfly and y'all have a fabulous day if you guys have any questions you can comment them below um i guess i could take a few minutes to um answer some questions um i i haven't seen any of the ones so if you've asked anything before i'm not going to scroll through right now i'm going to go ahead and get the questions that are on here um that come up now and then i will try to answer as many as i can um if anyone has any anyone anyone I see all of you guys loving it. Thank you. Giving me loves and likes. I love that. Okay, well, I don't see any questions right now. So I will just leave you guys on that note. If you do have questions, just comment here. I'll come back and try and catch up with you all. And I hope that you guys have a fabulous day. I love you guys all. And let's all be super monarchs. Hello, new seminar year. Make your goals today. Love you. See you guys later. Bye.